Thank you for staying with us. Uh, some key stakeholders of the People's Democratic Party have become stumbling blocks to the party's efforts for reconciliation. Prominent members like Atiku Abubakar, his running mate, Ifan Yokoa, former governor Yesumike, and uh, other G5 members were absent in the meeting organized to iron out issues affecting them. It can be recalled that the, uh, the grievances between the group and individuals affected the outcome of the 2023 election in the party. The acting national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, <clears throat> Umar Damagum, said the purpose of the party was to review the outcome of the 2023 general election and uh, share ideas on ways to strengthen the PDP for future challenges. We have uh, joining us uh, to talk about this, the uh, PDP chieftain, Shagun Shoumi. He joins us now via Zoom. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on the program. Good morning. I can't seem to see you, but good morning still. All right. We can see you, and you are looking sharp. But, uh, thank you for joining and us Nigerians now. Nigerians can see him. <laughs> yeah, okay. Good right. morning, guys. Morning. Thank you. Good morning. Now, this matter of reconciliation within the party, this is not the first time that the party has tried to reconcile aggrieved members, but it's seeming like uh, this path is becoming a tortuous one where uh, some key party members, some stakeholders are not ready to come together to reconcile and put the party together. Okay, thank you. Mm. First of all, let me thank you for the opportunity. But let me set one very important comment that has trailed your headline. It seems to be that a lot of our followers and sympathizers and general members of the Nigerian public believe that the CBC is hostile to PDP. A great really? number of them feel that you couch headlines in a manner that does not allow our people to be encouraged to attend your function program. But I have always insisted that you can be fair and that the conversation must be had in such a manner mm. that your audience at least can make their judgment. Now, I haven't said that. The reconciliation process, even the word reconciliation by its very, you know, usage and meaning, is not a one event. Reconciliation is a long, tedious sometimes, but continuous process that has an objective in mind. For a party as old as the PDP, if you recall, you can call the PDP the legacy party. Perhaps the only one that is close to it in age is Abga. Every other party has come much you know, much recently, and some of them have met so many times. One of the reasons why PDP has been able to survive for so long is because the party has never pretended that all is well when there are indicators that people are upset. Now, Nigerians are aware of all of the issues that played out in our journey towards 2023. Critical among the ones that people talk about the most are the five gentlemen governors, who former governors now, one of them is still a governor, who had a dramatically opposed position to the position of the party. Well, tempers, depending on the level of maturity of the speakers, you notice that they wore their anger in public space, especially the governor of River State, who seemed to be leading them at that time. We have gone into that election. We do not accept that that election is credible. We feel that whatever it's what, yes, we're in court, and therefore we'll have to wait to see how the courts will adjudicate. But we are also mindful of the national history of courts in our country. And we are also mindful of the general perception that people feel that it's very difficult to get judgment against a ruling party in Nigeria. But we believe that whatever the judges will do with the case, it's important for us to follow through with it. And it's also important for us, if you notice with PDP, we're not a political party that incites people. We don't call people out for violence. We don't use offensive adjective, even in an election, no matter how hot. And it is to our credit that we have a Democrat in our presidential candidate, now leader of the party, Atikwa Baka, who somehow, in a magical manner, has seemed to be able to control his utterances, control himself, taking a lot of criticism, sometimes on charitable comment, and yet try to be dignified. So all of this is what makes us up. So what happened that you are talking about is the present NWC 
ably led by the acting chairman Namakum, felt that, okay, we're in court, we're about now close to our case, maybe it's a good time now to open up the space for people to come and vet and say what exactly it is that they have as issues. Let us begin to see how we can bring people together. Let us listen to each other and let us now find a pathway to check who is still in the party, who wants to ship out, who is so upset that we need to apologize to, who has done something wrong that we need to punish. Let us surface all these issues. And the process has just started. They called in a group of uh, members of our party. And I can tell you, because I was there, that the conversation was very honest. And to the credit of the acting national chairman, there was something he said which I feel I should share. Mm. He said at that particular event that, look, I am not here to come and fight or help you fight your personal battle with each other. I'm here to help reconcile the party. I'm not unaware of the issues that everybody has, but please, 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 nobody should think that this NWC is going to fight their personal battles for them, especially the ones that are a bit individual. Now, all we're looking for is a way to speak to ourselves, to draw ourselves in, to lower the temperature, to recognize that elections are over, at least for now, and that we need to plan for the future. And we are a little bit um, lucky. Contrary to the expectations of people, especially our rivals, we still have a sizable amount of governors. We have a sizable number of senators, reps, and House of Assembly. And we are in tribunals in a lot of, a lot of states. We're in tribunal in Ogun. And uh, um, we believe we won in some locations. And we'll try and see how it is. You know, with tribunals, you have to be careful. You, what you're saying and what the judge is hearing and what you're able to prove can somehow be a little bit unsettling. But please note, the reconciliation report has not broken down. It has just started. It's going to continue. And we're going to keep at it. And we're going to take an audit of who is in, who is out, who's too far gone to be rescued, who can still be assuaged, whose nerves can still be assuaged. And then, of course, we're going to be here. And I believe that the party will be here for a very long time. Right. Of course, there are things that the party itself must of necessity do. But all of those are not things you share, especially with the media house that obviously has patronage or you know ownership that we all know. So I'll just say thank you for inviting us, but please be charitable to us. Understand that managing political parties is not as simple as that. I, I believe We're that is what we are community. doing. We being charitable is we inviting you to clear the air on some of the issues that you yeah, are raising the now. That a lot of our people were a little bit uncomfortable with. That's what uh, I said. Of course, they can choose to be uncomfortable, but we reaching out to you is a way of we showing charity. Uh, you mentioned, mentioned some things earlier, and uh, I would like for you to clarify, because some persons were saying that... Uh, it was curious to note that uh, the person of Atiku Abubakar was not present at that meeting. What happened? Okay, thank you very much. First of all, Atiku Abubakar is the biggest elephant in the room, really, and is the leader of the party. And sometimes when a leader sits through the early stage of reconciliation, maybe people will not even be free to vent. Some of the criticisms may also need to be directed at him. And I think what he chose to do was to sit out and allow the process to start so that people can really speak freely. And then at some point in time, it will be escalated to higher levels of conversation. When Atiku comes on the very first day, and then people are seated there, and you know how the Nigerian people can be. Psychophancy is, you know, second nature to people. It's like the way they do around leaders, even in the other party. So sometimes leaders stay out to allow people to have free flow of thought, free flow of conversation, free flow of ideas, to genuflex anyhow they like. And I believe that, you know, it's graduations and scaling. I can tell you for free that it's, it's such a meeting of only young people is still going to take place, where the younger elements of the party will also have an opportunity to sit together and ventilate on how they interpret what has happened, what they think is the way forward, their recommendation. I suspect that something that will cover the women and all that too will go. I also think that at some point in time, they're going to have one that covers BOT and legacy members. I believe they're going to also have one that covers the serving, you know, governors, what you call the governor's forum. In, the, in that kind of graduation, and if there are still people who are, you know, need to be, you know, sickled in, 
then they will also screw them. But what I want you to please let our audience understand is that democracy on its own is a journey. And the complex thing in a democracy is that there is a slight conflict between what is in the best interest of the tribe, that is, if you see a political party as a tribe, and what is in the best interest or the wishes of people and their personal aspiration. The conflict in this space is between how do you manage the cell vis-a-vis -vis how do we manage the tribe. And if you escalate it or expand that conversation further, it also can be applied to the country. How do you manage what is ultimately in the best interest of the country? And how do you, or what you, which will now be things you call patriotism, standing for nation, sovereign, in, you know, support and all that, and what constitutes a divergent opinion that is diametrically opposed to what's going on, but it's also in its own, still looking towards having us get a good country. And what is, you know, see no good, do no good, only or be chair leader. So what I'm trying to say in essence is that democracy by itself, multi-party democracy in their own, already tells us that the PDP, whatever you want to say about it, whether it won or lost or did not win and can win an election, has already demonstrated resilience. Because if I remember, and our memory is served very well, all of the parties that started with PDP in 1999, where are they now? Some of the players that are even playing very key roles in the opposition, in the ruling party now, some of them are <laughs> really PDP people. So you kind of like get the impression that the PDP is the university where they all graduate to. Some of them move on to do other things. Some of them stay back. I mean, the people that are, um, Peter B, for instance, it was just how many weeks ago was he just the vice presidential candidate of PDP? It is in an evil right for him to move, and he has moved. Somebody, the next, the present Senate president, <laughs> uncommon senator, uncommon governor, or now probably going to be uncommon Senate president, Akwabio. How can anybody say Akwabio is an APC man? That's a PDP man given to you. Uh, no rebuttal. That's a man that PDP created or you know, empowered and enabled. Yes. So what I'm trying to say is that don't be perturbed when you see PDP says they are reconciling. They are reconciling because they get that reconciliation is the only way that keeps the party alive. It doesn't matter how successful even an election may be or not be. You still have to reconcile. And I'll advise the APC, if they look truly and honestly at themselves, they're going to find out that when they are done with their appointments, There'll be a lot of people who will be feeling bruised. There'll be people who are using adjectives like, oh, they ask for God the three, the three will remember and all of that. They are all early signs of a need to reconcile. For me, as a, as a Nigerian and as a PDP stakeholder, at least, I can say that I, I, I prefer people who understand that the glass is half full to those who think that the glass is half empty. Because for all of the years that PDP has been around, the glass has always been half full. And it can't not really be pulled because new energies come in, new people come in, new idiosyncrasy come in, new entitlement mentality come in, new personality styles come in, new level of honesty comes in. Your honesty and my understanding of what happened may be different. There's always room for reconciliation. And I think that, except you say that the only time a political party is successful is if it wins every election and all elections all the time, then I would have to say that I can't find any political party in the world that can boastfully say to win all elections, uh, has won all elections, not even in some of the most stable democracy. Elections can be won, elections can be lost, elections can be still mated. For us in PDP, we reject the 2023 election because it did not meet the minimum standard. And it's a short end of the stick we are holding. If it meets the standard of integrity, we can accept that we were not voted in. But if it does not meet all the standards, it does not conform to what it promised us with IRED, it does not conform to even the gaslighting and the people hating that took place in some location, it does not conform to the kind of ethnic profiling that you, we thought you have escaped from, it, it, no, we will say, no, 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 this can't be the right way. And if we cannot be sure we won, and we cannot be sure we lost, then we have a right to have our position that it was a very badly run election, and we'll just say, okay, some people have been adjudging us for now. There's nothing we can do about that. Mm. Let us hope that the judiciary will at least come back and tell us what happened. 
Okay. Over and above whatever it is that they call their judgment. All so right. reconciliation is the right way to go and we are at it now. All right. Nigerians are glad that uh, all of that um, concerns are in the courts right now. And uh, with all the evidence that things didn't go well from the perspective of all of those who are in court, uh, the court will do the need for. Now, let's talk about the issue of uh, some persons whose bodies are in PDP, but their souls are not in PDP, whom some people might say that uh, they were involved in anti-party activity that led to the party not winning the election, you know, and so on. Uh, when it comes to the spirit of reconciliation, would that be the, give us an idea of how best to approach it? Because it would be to our interest all for PDP to come back on board, because when we're talking about this democracy, all political parties have to be on board so that they can hold each other to account one way or the other, put pressure on each other so that the Nigerian people benefit ultimately. But how is it going to, how will PDP handle the issue of people like that? Will there be a house cleaning where they'll be told to go or it will be the issue of let bygone be bygone and let us all come back together and move on in the spirit of uh, freshness? Well, thank you. That's a very, very good question. I thank you for that. Look, the main thing about people who have personal hearts, when you're really hot about something or things have not gone the way you wanted or your interpretation of things have not happened well, the first thing that must happen is you have to let go of your heart to some extent. If you don't let go of your heart, it gets a lot difficult for you to see rapprochement done towards reconciliation. What must not happen is for people to pretend that you have not been hurt or there are no basis for you to have been angry. Okay, now that the, if you like, the consequence of everybody's misbehavior, let me just generalize it, is that we, we are in court on an election that we could have won maybe by 12 o'clock of the day of the election. We can signpost where those people who are hot and who were not unhappy were unhappy and all that, we can signpost where we could suspect that their impact and their influences could have caused the party some numbers. But the damage is done. Let us hope that we can get it back in court. Now that that is done, what next? The water is spilled already. You can't take it back into the court, but you can quickly put in a seed into the ground and hope it germinates. So what are we saying? If you want me to personalize it and give you names, let me just say the G5 men, save for the fact that some of them have not managed their rhetoric and they are beginning to offend everybody. You can't go to a function and be speaking about that, whatever is what, in an indecorous way, in public space, and you think you're joking. You're joking at the expense of what can blow up in everybody's face. And don't forget, this is a country that is trying to be united. It's still quite tribal. The joke could crack among yourselves in your tribe may be considered extremely offensive to other people in other tribes. And there's enough madmen all around that we're all just trying to manage. If you really reduce the rhetorics, if you are empathetic and sympathetic, again, if you are empathetic and sympathetic to your fellow human beings within that space, you will understand that, okay, maybe you think you did something wrong or you did something wrong. Maybe we can just say, okay, we are all humans and let's just take it easy first. Until people calm down, we cannot be sure that even when you're trying to embrace them, they're not seeing it like you're trying to claw them. It's always a matter of perspective. Of course, my own personal recommendation has been, take a look at the rules of the party again. Determine why it is easy for these issues to keep coming up, either because of party primaries or because of state congresses or because of state primaries. There must be a mechanism to make sure that everybody can see that equity, justice, and fairness has taken place. And the rule must be quite clear, but it must also be enforceable. Any organization that shies away from discipline cannot, in the real sense, expect to survive or at least survive effectively for a long time. So it therefore means, without trying to say, oh, throw him out, or this man is guilty, that man is guilty, there must be a way where we say, okay, we have been around now for 25 years. We were registered in 1998. And to God alone be the glory, we have survived in spite of the fact that others have not been that lucky. And therefore, we are a pan-Nigerian party. We're a party that is measured in our utterances and our rhetorics. We don't put people, we don't put baboon anywhere. We don't, we don't play to tribal 
you know, you know and nice n n n entities, things that annoy the tribes. We are very conscious and we balance stuff. We understand where the country is and how the country is. We don't take, we don't disregard, you know, religious situation because religion and faith is something, you know, you never can explain to somebody why they have this religion or why they have this faith. We're not unmindful of the fact that nepotism doesn't work. We understand the concept of federal character because we created it. We understand the concept of let all Nigerians come to the table and have a dialogue because that's where we've been. We understand the fact that democracy is not a straight jacket that you can say is your way or the highway. We're not a people who don't make ourselves open for correction. We're not a people who are ashamed to apologize even when we feel the society needs to hear that we apologize. We're not a people who are afraid to be firm and say, no, we don't accept it and push it, but we are a people that don't support violence. And that brings me to the nonsense that took place in Ogun State under Governor Dakwa Biodo, where I was simply going to court for our tribunal, and for no reason whatsoever, his killer's courts came there and even attempted to kill me. And made more embarrassing is the fact that he couldn't even apologize, given the fact that we even have back channels with which to talk to ourselves. I don't think that is right. I don't think opposition should be bullied. I don't think the media will think that only the guy that has won is the one that needs to get all the clap. I feel that for democracy to work, civil society, bottom of the estate, all persons within the society must be interested in how things are running. And I think that one of the, the, the you know, the outposts of this is that you can see the small numbers that is even giving people presidency. It, we can safely say the number of people that are judged to have voted for Bola Tinubu as president is so small compared to the number of people who rejected him. So he still has to struggle with making sure that he can, you know, the country, whatever the, whatever the court says, can be a little bit more united, can come together and, you know, push the country in the right direction. And we must understand, the world is changing so fast, and Nigeria cannot be a country where elections for us now will now be war, or elections for us now will now be an nation, or being in opposition means that you can't sleep well at night, you can't walk on the street, because the likes of Dr. Abiodun will insist that while other states are having their tribunal, and nobody has come up to say that anybody has beaten them, harassed them, or maimed them, or tried to kill them just for showing up in court, that that kind of nonsense that takes place in Oko State, all we right. all must resoundly say, this is not acceptable. Because tell me, if someone like me now says, okay, I'm too scared to be part right. of the process, who exactly am I Mr. expecting Shawumi, can to you do hear the kinds of things that we do? Uh, one question on the minds of uh, a cross-section of Nigerians is the position of uh, the G5 with regards to this reconciliation. What are they saying? Did the party reach out to them to be a part of uh, this reconciliatory process? Well, um, thank you. Look, that's a very smart and brilliant question. Look, the, the you know, Thanksgiving service that was done for Governor, former Governor Wiki in his home state. I'm sure, as at the time that Magum was taking his turn to go to that to that event, he must have weighed it seriously, given the level of anger and you know rhetoric that is coming from that camp, including all the rumors about whether he's going to Idris or not. I'm sure he went there so that he can open the door to say, look. You know, Governor Wiki, you're very precious to this party. We know you are angry, but we're here. And I'm sure that if you also recall that they had that retreat in Bauchi, where Governor Cheyimaki also stood up and said, it's time for us to start, you know, rehealing the party and all that. And you will notice that when Atiku was going to make his comment, he said, oh, I want to commend she Governor Cheyim for that comment. You know, I was with Atiku Abaka yesterday, before I go to that G5 people. I've not seen him since the election for reasons best known to me. I just wanted him to have his space and I have my space because we deal with hearts differently. And at some point in time, I asked him, I said, Waziri, is it that you never get angry? Why is it that people are so mad, people are angry, and yet you're not angry? Are you sure that even God exists? You know, I was that direct. Do you even think that I this? Because I took up a guy, someone that he gets up every time they score to prayer. He doesn't pay prayers. If it's a 12 o'clock prayer, he would just get up, go and pray. Four, you go and pray, whatever. So I said, do you even think that this God even exists? Because I don't understand. You know what he said to me that really totally told me the kind of human being this guy is? Number one, he told me, Shagun, I don't know. For some reason, I still feel very hopeful.
truthful about the future of this country. Can you imagine that? Number two, he told me, well, that is true. That, but I have to, he has to remind me that there was a passage in the Quran where we they call him Nuh, we call him Noah. That, do I know that Prophet Noah kept praying to God for like 40 years? Do I know how long it took him to pray, pray, pray? And God, you know, he was, this is someone who I knew should be mad. Was the one telling me that, well, we just have to just believe in God. We just have to keep having the faith. And yes, sometimes I feel hot, I'm but bottom. I also understand that if I am too hot, am I supposed to add to the fire on the on the burner? So what am I trying to tell you? Okay. Age matures okay. people. There's nothing like G5 anymore. There's just G1 now. All of them are like rich. They, 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 they finish their tenure. Some of them have been lucky to have their successor. Some of them have learned that they cut their nose to spite their face. They've lost their senatorial bit. Some of them have not even been able to install successor. With I don't really like that. I don't think that it should have been. It should have been that divided. I get the argument on all sides, but the point is, we are here now. Anybody who feels so strongly that oh, the best thing is to go to APC, please be gone. The ones that went yesterday, where are they? Didn't they come back? I can use Saraki as an example. Even at Siku, if you if you if you if you permit me. You need to understand that democracy is a journey for the long haul and that reconciliation is always on the table. Some of the men that are angry today, should I remind them of some of the decisions they've taken in the past that other members were angry that we went around begging them? I can give you one. There was a time when the National Party of our party, the caucus, everybody said, let the national chairmanship go to the Southwest. But now we had another opinion around second dues. He came around, he pleaded his cause, and the people gave him second dues. The Southwest was upset. But we went around begging leaders that, oh, he didn't mean it, he didn't say it like that. What am I trying to say to you? I'm trying to say to you that none is all right and none is all wrong. We have, parties are free joining and free living associations. Anybody who is too upset can leave. But if you are not too upset and you think that the sun can shine tomorrow and you understand that after all, PDP got 16 years in power, all right. when they were doing 16 years in power, do you know the kind of discipline it would take for Bolatinubu, now President Bolatinubu, not to jump ship? Especially oh, oh, I shall... imagine when the South went... Yes. So, so, sorry, we're trying to manage time. So let me squeeze in this question before uh, we leave. Now, uh, the PDP, like you said, still has appreciable uh, presence. It has some governors, has some them. national... National Assembly members, has some House of Assembly members and all of that. Now, just in one minute, what will PDP do differently if they have the opportunity again, differently from what they had done before? You see, I can tell you for free, and this, I'm, I'm writing a piece, I've not finished it. I have never imagined in my life that I would see the level of hypocrisy that's even going on now in the PC. I'll tell you what I mean by that. APC was in charge with Mahmoud Bari for eight years. The same APC has now translated into Bolatinubu for, you know, whatever time it will be allowed, depending on how the, the cookie crumbles. Can you even imagine how they are doing a complete policy turn around, somersault, throwing everybody out, as though they didn't have that eight years? If they knew that multiple exchange rate was bad, why did the leader of their party, as it was then called, Bolatinubu, not tell them that? If they knew that subsidy we had to go, why did, they, why did they make us wait another eight years? What am I trying to tell you? It is only PDP that is acting like a political party. Even the ruling party, the APC today, is still behaving as if it's an election-winning vehicle for whoever wins. And the coloration of their party from their inflection, the level of the potism they show, how they put their appointment and all that, is a reflection of the fact that they have not accepted that they are a what, party. What will the PDP do differently? And that's part of the things that the PDP would do differently. The problem is that Nigeria had life abundance with the PDP. We were very honest. We were very focused. We were very receptive. Some of the things we've been screaming about is what they are now trying to do. We have spoken about removing subsidy forever. Article got almost pilloted with stone only on the basis of saying this thing has to go. All right. Article has been talking about the need to close the window. Almost all the economic policies that they are trying to do now, but not even with the right palliative, not putting the people in the center. What PDP would do differently is that PDP will always put the Nigerian mass, the poor of the Nigerian people, in the center of its budgeting process. And I believe that, all things being equal, Nigerians are going to have to deal with the consequences of whatever choices they have. 
I will implore all our friends, the, 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 the obedience and all that. Look, come back home. You have, it's, it's been a good run. You can't be angry with everybody. Come back to your darling party, PDP, and let us come and do opposition in a responsible manner and in a manner that gets us to be ready for whenever the next election is. And I'll apply and I'll say to the PDP leaders, all right. we have matured beyond the level of if you don't have your way, everything must crumble. People must understand that life happens. All the right. chances and the odds that you are where you are to we'll be have is to known leave as a result of this the conversation bullets. here now. PDP Chieftain Shegu Shomi, thank you for your time on the program.